Hey, it's a Monday. Let's get it going, huh? Boom! Hey, good morning, everybody. Today is a Monday, so we're going to need to go through Forex Dot today and uh, do the Commitment of Traders report, go through the calendar. Um, seems to me the big event of the week is tonight, the presidential debate, where Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump will give you uh, hair and makeup tips. And it's going to be awesome. Then they're going to play some Minecraft. It's going to rock your world. So it is the 26th of September, getting pretty close to the end of the quarter. Don't you stink? Things could get interesting. The calendar is light, so there could be some great trading. So let's talk about it. Without further ado, let's play the happy music. Life is good. Life is beautiful. Hey, 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 hey. Get out, mate. Shall I throw a pip on the bar before you? Ripper. Good morning, everybody. Hey. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. So please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. We can do the old one if you want. Welcome to Forex Dot. Today, let me remind you that the purpose of this presentation is education. This is not an alert service. I'm not here to make trade recommendations. I will conduct technical and fundamental analysis, and I'll do so in real time, pip by pip, candle by candle, with the overriding goal of helping you put together trade plans throughout this New York trading session. If you're trading along with me using a demo account from tradersway.com, then regardless of whether you're successful or not, you will have an opportunity to learn. Trading and investing is risky and not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. So always stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Hey, not bad for uh, going for memory, huh? And tweaking it a little bit. Yeah. Teach the old dog a few new tricks. <laughs> My name is Wayne McDonald. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. I'm also very humble. I'm very tall, very good looking, quite slim. Athletic for my age. Did I mention brilliant and humble? Yeah. All right, cool. I've been trading Forex for a very, very long time, and I'm here to share the good, the bad, and the ugly of that experience with you with the hopes that you can um, move towards successful trading habits uh, and results uh, sooner than later. Oh, yeah, that's right. And a nice, healthy head of hair. Yeah. 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 Could be worse. So like I said, it's a Monday, so we need to do some fundamentals and, and uh, make sure we know what's going on in the world, kind of like a market sentiment type thing. We do these sessions every day, Monday through Thursday here at Forex.today. What? Forex.today. Yeah, that's right, Forex.today. Um, so you can join us free. It takes a couple of seconds to register. What's the big deal? Every Friday, I'm at fxstreet.com. You will have to pay for that. It's for premium members only. Yeah. By the way, some really, really nice posts going on for Forex today. Um, so I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Let me pull that up. Um, a lot of people are posting for like, you know, they're relatively new to posting, which is really good. I can see a couple of here. Fusi and uh, Austin have made some nice posts. No uh, profile pictures. Maybe put that on the to-do list, right? 
you know how you do that? Oh, uh, I'm not logged in. Um, you log in and then you just, there's a drop down menu here and you click on edit profile. But some nice posts here I can see. Just really, really good stuff. Um, the programmers have finally had some pretty nice success with the um, with our custom code that um, when you follow somebody, right? So like, let's say you're following Kate. One thing that Kate does every day is gives you an update on every currency. Pretty nice, right? So you can follow Kate and you click follow. And if you do that, every time she makes a post, you get an email. Well, it used to just be something like, Kate made a new post, click this link. Now there's going to be uh, the images as well. So like uh, if, if you follow Vusi, you get the emails and say, hey, Vusi made a new trade plan. There would be a nice link and also a, the thumbnail just to give you to whet your appetite. So that's really cool. So what the, the reason that's important, let, let me put it all together in the big picture here. The reason it's important is you can customize your experience on Forex Dot today and get updates on just the, the, the analysts that you appreciate the most. Okay. That's cool, right? Customize your experience. Nothing wrong with that. All right, so I guess let's start here. Uh, oh, oh, uh, one other thing I wanted to mention. Uh, is there a post? Let's Arsalan. Do you guys follow Arsalan? 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 You follow him? He, uh, you can see he has an MBA and, and quite a bit of years of trading experience. And I, I'm going to have him do some uh, projects for me. One of the things he's, um, you're going to see from him uh, more and more often is scalp alerts for trading opportunities based on news events. But the other thing, and maybe you want to uh, congratulate him in one of his posts, leave a comment. But uh, he and I had a big long conversation last week, and he was uh, he was pretty uh, let's say stressed out because he was applying and taking tests to be accepted into a PhD program in finance. Yeah, that's a big deal, right? So he just took his exams uh, late last week. Um, you know, and like I said, the, the entry exams for a PhD program in finance, I, don't, I wouldn't say they're easy. So anyways, Arslan, um, Scored very, very high. In fact, he's on the, uh, the first merit list for the Dean's first merit list. Right? So he did very, 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 basically, you know, the highest test results out of everyone that applied. Yeah. So, you know, maybe leave a comment. Just tell him that I, tell him that I told you and that you're happy or whatever. But anyways, this guy, you know, He's on the staff of Forex Stutt today, and he's here to help you every single day. So like I said, uh, not only is he going to give you daily market updates for a currency pair, but he's going to look at scalping opportunities, because he also scalps. And these scalping opportunities are based on news, like core CPI, core retail sales, for example, for USD CAD. Hey, you're welcome. So that he and I brainstorm that up and now he's actually doing that. See scalp alert, scalp alert, scalp alert, pound dollar, scalp alert, FM, FOMC. Cool, right? So give him feedback on that because this is a new thing and if you want to see something specific in uh, like scalp alerts, give him feedback. Right? Give him feedback. Let him know what you need. Okay, so we're doing this for you, so tell us what you need. Pretty easy, right? Oops. Life is great. Life is grand. Life is good. Ryan, are you going bald? 
My. Your eyes are so pretty, no one will ever notice. All right. Your row. Oh, let me get my drawing to well, as they say on France. Where is the to well? Reminds me of Jacques Cousteau. Oh, hey, uh, speaking about Jacques Cousteau, <laughs> it wasn't Jacques Cousteau, but where's my drawing? To? Um, I read that uh, there's this team of scientists that just recently went to the bo bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. By, by bottom, I mean where so deep that no one else has ever been able to go. Where's my drawing tool? Gee whiz, too many screens. So anyways, they get to the very, 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 very bottom. There's no light. It's so unbelievably deep that it's ridiculous amounts of pressure. Nothing could possibly live. Where's my drawing tool? I keep clicking. It says it's open. I guess we have a brain fart on the drawing tool. So anyways, guess what they find at the bottom of the ocean where it's so deep nothing can live? This was just like a couple of weeks ago. I don't know where they're drawing to. Guess what they find out? Alien fish? Kind of. They get to the sand, and they throw some light on the sand, and they're like, hey, what's at the bottom? Let's look. Let's see what's literally on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to stop my drawing tool and start it again and see if it actually appears. This is all going to crap here. Sure, you want to? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So, you know what they find? They take a look, they shine some light on the sand, and it starts kind of bubbling all over the place. Bubbling. They're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> all over the place. So, they go in, they scoop some sand up. And there's life under the sand, hiding underneath the sand, consuming food that exists under the sand. But nothing could live in this perf pitch dark, no light at absolute pitch darkness. Unbelievable amounts of pressure that they have to have a special type of little drone that could go down there because everything else will get crushed. They're single cell organisms. Just one cell, and it absorbs food through the cell walls there's no mouth no eyes there's only one cell and of course it spits out waste back out through the cell wall it's the type of thing like like cells inside your blood i mean so tall uh, so small you would need a microscope right the size of softballs think of if you don't know what a softball is think of like a croquet ball oh what yeah the size of your hand, single cell organism living under the sand. <laughs> oh, what? All right, so my drawing tools effed up. Um, it don't it don't work none. Um, oh, I I got it. All right, cool. Finally, it's way over there. Too many screens, guys. Too many screens. So anyways, yeah, the thing, huh? Yeah, it's similar to that, I suppose, right? Isn't that amazing? Single-cell organism as wide as you can make your hand. Oh, snap. All right. So, Euro, remember this is a Tuesday of last week. No net change. No significant net change. Okay. So if you're a bull, a bear, or neutral, nothing's changed for you. In the UL. Jacques Cousteau. One, two, three, foot in the water. That's what made me think of uh, the bacteria. My horrible French accent. We are going into the water. All right. Um, life is great. Life is grand. 
long what whoa what do you think statistically important Holy smokes, eh? Yen Yen. Longs, of course I meant to drawing, okay, longs, shorts, less shorts if anything, right, but a little more people going long, not a significant change of as of Tuesday, let's jump ahead to Aussie. Net, way down, huh? Look how many longs got out. Wow, huh? Look at the big decline in longs. Do, 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 do. Look at that. I was just glancing over my shoulder, though. I'm I'm a little worried <laughs> about that higher high. Damn this drawing tool. But look at the entry. Woo. What do you think of that entry? Uh, I guess you can't see it. It says sell. Now, how could I possibly get it so unbelievably perfect? Another perfect entry. What's the trigger? Uh, how about 77.00? Down, back to the psych level, drop it like it's hot. Oh, but it's 90% overbought. Besides that. Okay. Life is great, life is grand, life is good. Uh, Kiwi. So we definitely need all this updated. That's why I'm flying through it. But check this out. Net positions. Holy smokes. Okay. And what is it? Shorts. See? Net. The shorters. The bears. Look at the increase in bears. Hardly anything in the bulls. Okay, bears just shorted it big time. Holy smokes. Amazing, huh? Yeah, a lot of, lot of sentiment. So again, it's not just bulls taking profit. It's bears selling. They're adding to negative positions. They're not withdrawing positive positions. They're adding to negative positions. Big difference. And what's going on on Kitty Cat as of Tuesday of last week? Increase in bullish positions, increase in bearish positions. Nobody knows what the hell's going. Cats are living with dogs. To quote uh, Ghostbusters, of course. And uh, ultimately, nothing changed except volume went up.
fire, brimstone, cats living with dogs. Yeah. So that's that. Uh, you see this right here? Pipeline shut down disrupts gasoline supply in the southeast. Yep. My neighborhood. But guess who filled up with full tank of premium? Is this right? Uh huh. So, anyways, that's the last. That's that stress is over. All right. Uh, let's do this. No. Mwah. I got a text from my wife. She's like, hey, did you hear about this thing, Babber? Make sure we got gas. Apparently, or, you know, the city's running out of gasoline. I'm like, honey, filled to the rim, filled to the brim with premium. All right. So let's go through the week. Um, to Tonight is the presidential um, speech or uh, debate, and I think that's going to be very interesting. So that's what's on my mind. Okay, what else is going on? We got some new home sales today. Good. We want to be on trend. They're looking at a massive month over month decline, but again, you buy a lot. You, most people buy houses. Well, Children are still in summer holidays. You want to move into your new house before school starts, especially if it's a new school district, right? So people don't tend to buy houses in September, October. So there should be a decline month over month. It makes sense to me. Draghi's going to flap his gums. He's going to say a lot of words and do nothing, right? <laughs> Pelosi's going to talk. Yeah, you got to listen to him. Bank of Japan meeting minutes. Yeah, you got to read those. And the OPEC meeting starts, and they're going to agree to do nothing. Okay, great. Uh, did you guys have you? Did you spend any week on the uh, or any uh, time this weekend on the BIS website? Really? Look at Austin. Really? Seriously? All right. Did you uh, did you see anything interesting? I'll eat my apple while you while you type. Type 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 type. Stress reports. Hmm. How about this? For the first time in history, foreign exchange volume and trading went down. For the first time since reporting, foreign exchange trading went down. So if it was five trillion, now it's only four and a half trillion, whatever it was. It didn't go up. Pretty interesting though. Okay. All right, Case Schiller comes up tomorrow. Again, just more housing data. Probably won't change at all, is my guess. Won't go, won't show up, it won't show down. Durable good orders, that'll be interesting, but it's so volatile. The numbers are so, you know, shotgun that, you know, you never know if good is good or if bad is bad. Then a lot of de details out of Japan, but remember, these are only... In you know, all, all this economic information is only interesting in the context of will it make a central bank change their policy? And we just went through a bunch of central bank meetings and nobody wants to change their policy. So would this make them change their policy? Probably not, right? So I look at all this as just an opportunity to keep trading. Do whatever you want to do and most likely nothing's going to change. So if you are a bull, nothing's going to get you to go neutral or bearish and if you're a bear nothing's going to make you go neutral or bullish it's just going to, nothing will probably change your point of view so at least 
you know, just trade it technically in the direction of your point of view. Right, European unemployment, like, or German unemployment, I don't think that'll change dramatically, right? Your uh, German um, CPI, I don't expect a, a shock, right? A shock in inflation levels in the Eurozone. So, GDP should be interesting, though, because we want to see growth and we want to see inflation, right? We're actually trying to get inflation, and we want some growth. We certainly don't want to see a slowdown. So the, this is a nice opportunity to take a look at growth. So Wednesday, I think, will be very interesting. Okay? Because, and, and also, this is a quarterly report. And this one's annualized, right? So it's it's not just like month over month PPI. Uh, GDP is is a big deal, right? So that'll be interesting. Pending home sales, once again, just like all the other uh, housing reports, should be on trend. Should be down versus the month before, but again, seasonally, that would be normal. More yen stuff. Yen, 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 yen. So what do we, are we, uh, you know, we might get some yen moves this week. But it seems to me we're much more likely to get bad news than good news. But sometimes what that adds up to is bad news is good news because it'll force the central bank to change. So, but again, if that did happen, it would be after this, right? So... You have to look at this and say, what's in the trend of all, all this yen news? And when's their next policy meeting? That's when you start Googling, right? And you, and you say, well, the news is so bad, they're going to have to do something at the next meeting. And maybe a week before that next meeting, you start tiptoeing into your positions based on your thoughts. Okay? But I kind of feel like the central banks between now and the end of the year are are more ought to be uh, stagnant, right? I don't feel like anyone's going to come to anybody's rescue anytime soon, right? Is Draghi going to announce a big change? Is the Bank of England going to announce a big change? Is the Bank of Japan going to announce a big change? All right, the Fed maybe, but even that's 50-50. And then... Uh, what, Canada, Australia, New Zealand? Well, they've all raised interest rates and are all probably cutting interest rates, and you know, so they're all over the place. FOMC is the only game in town, right? OPEC, they can't agree to do anything. So, trade, right? Trade on, brother. Trade on. Yellen's going to give a speech. We, we like that. What else are you going to do Friday? Here's the thing with Friday. It's the end of the quarter, right? Isn't that right? January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Yeah. Quadruple witching. Last week, I guess, was quadruple witching. Huh. Sorry about that. Missed that. So it's the end of the quarter. And uh, that, you know, that could possibly lead to some interest right because if you need to book some profit or or rebalance your portfolio you're going to need to do it right around then also the end of the month is usually your opportunity to look at things like mexican peso fred says corota says they're ready to use every policy tool if needed yeah so the debate that they have is whether it's needed or not. Okay. And then Monday morning, Sunday night, opens up with things like Tankan survey, which is important for uh, the yen. All right. Maybe some Aussie moves. Cool. Oh, and I, sorry, I forgot uh, the Chinese PMI. Sure. That's moderately interesting. So that's that. 
Oh, when is that, uh, Smith? Mexican interest rate decision, that would be pretty cool. I don't think I got it on here. Yeah, I don't believe it's on our calendar. So I guess look that up, right? It's interesting. Uh, I don't think I've ever had low on here before, but it's showing the uh, commitment of traders report being released Friday afternoon. That's cool. Oh, uh, Turkey was downgraded. That's an interesting thing that occurred. Oh, here it is. Jobless rate. When is the peso there? Uh, is it? Uh, oh. Thought I saw it. It jumped on me. I saw it and then it disappeared. What the WTF? What happened to it? Okay, jobless rate. I thought I saw it up here. Mexican trade balance. Wish you could sort it. Anyways, you could look it up, I guess, take the time, look it up, but uh, that could be interesting. I don't know if they want the hot money or if they're going to cut, right? See, there was a while there when a, an amazing amount of money was going to Mexico because of their high interest rates, and then they were making changes at the bank to try to prevent that flow because it was making an artificially strong uh, Mexican peso. But now that it's quite weak, maybe they want to reconsider that and they'll take the hot money. So anyways, I, I still didn't see it, but it, it's there somewhere apparently. Oh, the 29th. There you go. It's 6 p.m. 29th. What is that, Friday? Oh, I see. Yeah. I don't think I scrolled. Yeah. Yeah. 1 p.m. Cool. Yeah, it's the issue of the page scrolling or the calendar scrolling. All right. Cool. All right. So, uh, got to deal with this position. Okay, one would hope that it heads back down. Too late for me to do anything now. That's that's the one downside to doing webinars. It makes right. It's hard to do multiple things at once. But I'm hoping we can keep this lower. Really, I was hoping that it would stay below the 21. But what can I do right now? I suppose praying never hurt, right? Bum 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 bum. 
So what I was hoping for is if I could be brave, we can get at least down to there or even lower. You see what I mean? I don't want to overtrade this time of year. If it's July or March, I don't mind lots and lots and lots of little trades. This time of year, I do try for home home runs or a, 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 a allow for trends to develop and take off. So I'm willing to accept situations like this. In other in other circumstances, I probably wouldn't. Of course, ultimately, I'd love for the yen to weaken, but I can't take that trade in a in a in a market or a trend of strength. So I'd rather it weaken if I can get myself in a situation where I, I make money or I don't lose money, then I will play that out. So for example, here let me move, let me move this. Okay. So uh, let's say it came down and then came up and then came down. I would actually want that. And I would love to be long in here. And then I'd be in the situation where I'm going to try to hold it through this resistance. Right? And try to get through all that for a long-term long. And I would be willing to accept a break even there. I'm kind of doing this as well where I could be down here at, let's say, 76. And I'll keep an eye on it. And I could take profit, which is not a problem because I'm not long-term short. I could be short-term short, short over and over and over again. But wouldn't it be nice if it did this if I'm short? Okay. But I'm not going to, like, pick up 50 pips. How embarrassing. So let's try to, let's try to, let's try to let it run if possible, right? So I'm already down here. Sell, sell, sell. Down. Hopefully it stays below that five and heads down. That's my general plan right now. Does that make sense? If it's below this four hour five, I shouldn't be a bull. Okay. Life is great. Life is grand. Life is good. So anyways, um, what do I want to look at now? Um, just kind of looking around the world. I guess we could just take a quick, quick scan of everything. Okay, so this is a week to start preparing for Mexican peso. It's too early to do it now, of course. But what if, I know there's a lot of lines here, so let me get out of this. We're at the 200% of the, uh, of the uh, fib retracement. All right, so anyways, we're way up here, and you're thinking maybe by the end of the week, literally Friday, the peso gets strong. Would you be looking for a double top here if that's the case? Then the next one would be weekly R1 and then down and then a lower high, then a lower low, and you'd, you would almost set up like a head and shoulders type pattern, right? So if the double top doesn't work, then plan B would be the head and shoulders. And of course, the head and shoulders would look like this. Generally speaking, right? So if you can envision these two things, then you can anticipate that they'll happen, which means you could be ready and waiting. If this drops off the double top, right, then you're thinking, all right, it's going to head down to the pivot profit zone. 
come back up to the weekly central and you'll dump it Thursday or Friday. If it goes up to weekly R1, then you need it to come back down to the neckline, which is weekly support one, up to the shoulder line, which is weekly M3, and then ride it until next week to the downside. That's what a trade plan is, where you're, it's a hypothesis, and you say, well, I see one of two situations occurring for whatever reason. In this case, you're thinking repatriation flows. Great, fine, fine, great, 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 fine. And if you get the Mexican peso strength with the, one of those patterns, you know what to do. And if you don't get it, you don't trade it. You know what I mean? It's like going to the ATM machine. You either know the code or you, right? You, you either know the password or you don't. Guessing ain't going to be the right way to get money out of the bank, right? Good apple. But not a great apple. I know where to get some good apples. Uh-huh. Joe Berg. Greatest apples in the whole world. <laughs> oh, crew. It's a big balloon. All right. Kind of interesting. We're in a new range, huh? Home, home on the range. Where the deer in the antelope lay. Or seldom is heard of this gritching wood and skies are no cloudy old day. All right. Look at our oil. So we got an OPEC meeting. Hey, they're going to come out and announce major slashes in production to drive up oil prices. And they're going to do it with solidarity. Sounds ridiculous. But where do they meet? It's like Geneva, not Geneva. Uh, they meet in Austria, don't they? Yeah. Oh, this time they're going to Algiers. Oh, okay, yeah. I was just going to say it would be interesting to hang out at one of those meetings. So you got to, you know, you got to make a choice whether you're going to sell it off for that or not. It's that simple. So 46, maybe. Right? And you also have to decide whether you believe we're, our range is getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Okay. We need some global macroeconomics. We need supply side and we need demand side. Somebody needs to kick in, right?
So that would be like an argument for Keynes and for Hayek to the debate. Anybody uh, experts in Keynesian economic theory? All right. Boop. Here's our gold. You know, one of the things I talked about after the uh, recent central bank policies or, or lack of changes in those policies was that you should probably look at gold again. You know, I'm not a I'm not a gold bug. I'm not a gold bull. I don't buy gold, generally speaking. But in this situation here, I'm like, yeah, you should probably buy some gold. <laughs> you know, it's not it's not that my opinions change. Well, that that's just what you do in that scenario. You know, it's like taking candy from a baby, right? It's like you might not like it, but it's pretty easy to do. So Dixie weakening because, you know, the Fed didn't raise interest rates. So a lot of people were on the wrong side of that. And they're not going to raise interest rates in November, right before Thanksgiving, I think it is, isn't it? So therefore, maybe 50-50 chance in December. We got a lot of wonder, uh, water under that bridge first. And uh, I don't know what to tell you about the presidential election and, and or I mean debate really tonight I, I, I hope I hope you're okay with that honest answer um, I don't know you know I don't know if I can believe the media and what they say that people are saying or what they say people want but I think we're going into this debate 46 46 percent right totally tied up um, I don't know like Hillary is and her Democrats have changed, and it's not her, but uh, let's just say the Democratic Party is moving more and more to not just democratic rule of capitalism, but more like democratic rule of socialism. I don't like that. I don't want that at all, because to me, that's guaranteed poverty for everybody. And that's that. And you can just look at any any welfare state on the planet and there hasn't been one that worked uh, ever so that doesn't sound good to me and then Trump says some good things sometimes then he says some bad things sometimes and then of course in between all of that he can say things that are crazy or stupid so what you know what what does the vast majority of the market think and how will they react to this presidential debate today you know honestly I don't know I don't know so watch it and see it what I said six weeks ago probably I said that uh, Hillary is going to come out and, and say nothing new and you either love her or you hate her and then nothing will change um, we'll learn virtually nothing right I don't think she's going to shine I don't think people will quote her I think it'll just be Hillary. And if anything, I, I think she's going to lose some people. It was, uh, you know, whatever. And then you got Trump, which is the big question mark, right? And I think he'll, if he can come out and look presidential and not say anything stupid, he'll steal the entire show. And they'll quote him, and they'll say this, and they'll say that. So it comes down to Trump will either win it or give it away. And if he gives it away, Hillary will just be standing there. So they're like, all right, this guy's a complete lunatic, psychopath, maniac, moron. So here you go. I guess you can have it, Hillary. Or he can just come out and just totally steal the show, and Hillary's going to lose 30% of her voters. And it'll, it'll be whether Trump wins it or whether Trump gives it away. And really, he hasn't even won over the Republicans, right? So... He could, he could, and I have a feeling he could say some things because he's more dramatic with more of a personality, let's say. And he'll come out and he could, he could just blow everybody away and say, holy crap, well, there you go. And he'll clearly win or he'll clearly lose. I think 
right? And then maybe, and I think this is the long shot, maybe he comes out conservative and doesn't really say anything and hedges some things and flip-flops on things and plays it calm and cool. And uh, he looks more like Al Gore. Uh, and, you know, and uh, I, 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 I think that's very un, un, unplausible. Hey, well, it could be worse, Ryan. We could have a, a politician from South Africa running the show, right? But maybe that's a good idea. Maybe we should just go into the prison somewhere and let somebody else, <laughs> let somebody out of the prison and make them president. We'll see. And I don't, that's not a dig at Mandela. Mandela. So don't get all upset at me. I didn't mean it that way. Don't don't misinterpret me. All right, I'll I'll take my foot out of my mouth now. No, I I'm more like uh, there seems to be. Well, I guess I should keep my mouth shut. Yes, yes. Zuma. But it does seem like there in, in Africa in general there's like a, a, ro a ro revolving door of you become a politician and you were either in jail in the last five years or you're going to be in jail in the next five years. That's kind of where I'm going, right? It's like one way or the other. But look, I'm Canadian, living in the United States. Who am I to like talk about South African or African politics? So don't listen to me. All right. We got Euro, we got stuff going on in here. You know, it doesn't look like a trend I want to be involved in. Um, dollar weakness, yeah, I get that. Euro strength, no, I don't really get that. And maybe it has to do with direction of gold. Who knows? Uh, but it's it's really good like uh, to reverse this. You know, if you are South African, uh, a positive move, oh, that's oil. A uh, positive move for gold is going to be good for you. Right? And that looks really good, especially if we're up in here. So if you're South African, you know, your rand is probably going to do better than it, than, it, than it has been, let's say, or historically has done. This is a good time to have some rand. But how long is that going to last? Three months? Six months? Really hard to say, right? Seems like there's a lot of resistance in here. So, you know, in November, the people will start talking about a, a, a December rate hike by the Fed. And if the Fed does what they're supposed to do, let's, let's say they've already decided to raise interest rates in December. And that's why there is a dis, the three dissenters. Then they're going to have... You know, they have the next November meeting to really basically say, we're really, really, really eager to raise interest rates. What if there were, what if it was split in November 50 50? I guess you can't really do it, but you know, it, it was, you know, even more red flags that, that they want to raise interest rates in December. And then between now and December, you get more and more Fed guys coming out saying, you know what? We need to raise interest rates. We need to raise interest rates. We need to raise interest rates. Um, if if only for let's say they raise interest rates, and then in, in a year we go back into recession because the global economics just never 
um, improve. There's just no fiscal changes anywhere globally. And all these screwed up countries are just as screwed up as they were before. And they're like, well, we we're hoping the central bank would save us. No, your screwed up government is the one that's doing it. So nobody fixed these problems. And we go back into recession. At least the Fed would be able to uh, lower interest rates a couple of times, right? I know that's a dumb reason to raise it, but I don't know. And of course, wasn't the logic that if they cut interest rates, people would save less and spend more? Because why would you save if your money is not going to grow? If your money is also becoming less powerful, buys less and less, you, buy, you better buy more today because you'll get less tomorrow. This is what they teach you in the textbooks. Well, except if you're old, you're going to say, I need to save even more money now because it's not growing. And if I spend it, I'll run out of money. If you're retired and your retirement account isn't growing, you, you know, you're not going to go out and buy flat screen TVs. You're not going to go on trips around the world if you're like, damn, you know, I might be 10 years short on my nest egg because of this global recession. Now, I don't see any sign of that, but I'm saying if, because it, it, it is a possibility. You have to play it out, but I don't see any signs of that yet, right? But, you know, so anyways, I think a lot of textbooks will need to be rewritten, and maybe I'm the one to rewrite them. Uh, I don't know. But I know uh, I am currently a purchaser of textbooks, and very often I am disagreeing with what they teach. And this might be an interesting example, right? The opposite's happening. It's like negative interest rates in Japan should weaken the yen to force people to spend, except it did the exact opposite. It forced people to save. It's fascinating, really. But remember, right, all models are wrong. And what we've been taught all these years is just what we thought would be right. It, it was a hypothesis. It was a model. So it seems like the models were simply wrong. So, and we're now learning through these experiments, right? So another risk-off opportunity for you guys would be to follow money into Swiss bank accounts. The dollar, right? Dollar and the Swissy, they're not really going anywhere. So you could do something like, um, do I even have it here? Yeah, I do. Where's the money flowing, yo? Would you say it's a bullish trend or a bearish trend? <laughs> yeah, but that's only a year and a half. So one of these things I tell you, you need to be patient and disciplined and all this kind of stuff. What I mean is, you know, you get scenarios like this. But, right, this is that period that we're in now, August to December, right? Right, so August to December, right? So, how do you play it? Well, you pick your lines and you hold if you can, really, right? Because if you sold here, you probably had a good year. If you sold here, you probably had a good year. 
You sold here, you probably had a good year. You sold here, you, you probably had a good year, right? But what if all you, all you did was trade in between these little candles? Right? Because you got to think, well, if all your trades are 50 pips or less, you're not really bullish or bearish, you're, and you're, you only get, let's say, 60% winners, 40% losers, uh, you know, you're looking at all this and you're, you're making 175 pips a month. Versus, you know, there's a thousand pips, there's a thousand pips, there's two thousand pips, right, or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, history might repeat itself. Well, it may rhyme. We're not getting the policies, the, ch the change in policies out of, like, the Bank of Japan that we needed for yen weakness. That's part of the guess, part of the hypothesis, part of the analysis is that one would think since the Japanese economy is choking on its own blood that the Bank of Japan would need to come out and do something to, to stimulate the economy further. Well, earlier in the year, they, they went negative on interest rates. That was their attempt to weaken the yen. Unfortunately, it didn't work. So, you know, right around this period, maybe they come out in the next six weeks and do something. It's a little late, but, but welcomed. But they need to do something to change the trend. Otherwise, the, chen, the trend will not change. It's just that, that, that's that simple. So will it repeat? Well, it has the, it has the capability of, of rhyming. Okay, but look, isn't this where we are now, right at the end of September, b beginning of October? Okay. What happens sort of the second week of December? Fed meeting, thank you. And what happens about here? By the way, this is where you typically buy Japanese yen. I already know what I'm going to do. Repatriate? No, it's it's simpler than that. It's just the end of the year. So the second week of January, I'll be buying Japanese yen. See, I already know. I already know. It's, it's, it's great. Every year, about that time, I buy Japanese yen. It's what I do. It's like in, in September and October, it's a good time to go apple picking. Why is it a good time to, like, how do I know the apples are going to be ripe in that time period? How do I know? I haven't even stepped foot on an apple orchard. Oh, seasonality. Huh. That's just the right time for the, so, oh, there, <laughs> there you go. That's where I go yen picking. I start picking yen and filling my baskets full of yen. But by March, the yen trees are bare. And I'm sick of apples. I'm sick of yen. I've had yen pie and yen, yen beer, yen wine. <laughs> what else? Whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking apples, dandy boy. Uh, anyway, so, you know, uh, yeah, there you go.
James says, uh, expand on that a little farther, James. Unless Kuroda waits three months to weaken the yen. What do you mean by that? Yeah, I just ran out of apple things, right? Shrimp, you can go on. Well, they haven't been able to do that before, James. Right? They haven't been able to do that before reasonably. Um, so, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. So they they need to change a policy, but they also need Europe to do something. They, we need to see global macroeconomics. But if if a 68-year-old American decides he can't afford to spend any money because he's not earn, earning any income on his life savings, you see, like the logic in the textbook is wrong, right? You don't say, I'm not earning any income, so I'm forced to spend my money. A 68-year-old person looks at their account saying, damn, all I'm doing is drawing down my account. 25 or 30 years ago when I was saving in this retirement account, it was we, we thought it would be growing at 5 or 6% a year, and I'd live off the income. But now there's no income. All I'm doing is drawing down the principal. So even if interest rates do go up in the future, I'll have significantly less money. So what they say is, holy crap, I'm not going to buy anything. I'm not even going to go to the store. So they're not buying TVs and laptops from Japan, for example. Right? And, and in fact, this guy might have to work at Starbucks. So I, I wrote a, a, a book, actually, uh, not a book, uh, 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 a chapter of a book um, a few, you know, several years ago, probably 2009. And I talked about, you know, Americans working at, at coffee shops, even though they're 70 years old, because they need the money. If they can get some sort of benefits, that would, that would be great. And also, they can eat day-old muffins for breakfast. Can you imagine being 70 years old and, you know, working five hours a day so that you, you can eat day-old muffins and maybe that's your, the, your calories for the, for the day, eating yesterday's pastries? But you're like, dude, it's a huge benefit. I can cut back on my, my food budget. That sucks. But I can see that really happening, right? So somebody needs to turn the ship around. And maybe Europe should get together, but or you get their act together. But, you know, once again, I, th I think continental Europe has turned into uh, socialism. UK's got their own problems, right? Japan... Wow, you know, so I don't know. It's amazing. So someone's got to do something. Yeah, and Donald Trump will turn around. Well, some of the things that I don't like that he says is, you know, basically closing borders and stuff like that, um, you know, walking away from free trade. But, you know, someone that studies these things, I can tell you, I've gone back through a thousand years of history, and I can tell you, you shut down your free trade, you, you close your borders, your economy is going to go into the tank. It happens every time over a thousand years. And it's very quickly, too. Like within 10 years, your economy has collapsed. Just, I, I can show it to you over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. The UK became filthy, stinking rich when they got rid of um, tariffs. That's what made them filthy, stinking rich. And then they went back to protectionism 50 years later, and that was the end of the English Empire. They went into a 30-year recession and then, and then into war. Never recovered. 
Now, they benefited for a long time, but their economy never recovered, and now they are not the hegemon. They gave, they gave that to the United States. So anyways, you want to you kill your, your economy? Close the borders. Stop trading with people. And of course, if they're not trading with you, later on when competition kicks in, well, they're not trading with you, so that you must be a competitor. So therefore, they're better off just killing you. If you're not going to trade with them, they might as well just kill you and take your resources. Why not? If you're trading and everybody's making money, they're like, hey, hey, we're all benefiting here, and it's all good, and wars go away. So anyways, uh, not my job to preach about that. I'm just like, this week's a very interesting giant question mark. So let's see what happens with the debates tonight. And uh, just enjoy being a currency trader. And, uh, you know, volume's going down. I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing. So, you know, to comment on that, when I first started trading currencies, it was $2 trillion a day. And it went as high as, I think, $5 trillion a day. And I don't know what the BIS said it is now, but let's say it's $4 trillion. It tells me there's still... Um, a hundred percent more market participants, let's say, because I don't think the same amount of people are tr trading twice as much. Like, if anything, there's at least twice as many people in the market. So, if we're losing that volume, and uh, what'll happen, I think, is we'll we'll get a more uh, an increase in volatility, but not a significant one. But when I first started trading, non par non farm payrolls would come out. And the Euro USD would jump up 300 pips in about five minutes. 300 pips. And then it would fall 400 pips and then rise 300 pips from that. And then when it was all over, it was a 200 pip move up. But it moved 1,300 pips in, in a course of three hours. Well, obviously, we don't get that any, anymore. What usually happens in non-farm payrolls is it moves 80 pips and stops. Right? So maybe if we lose some of those market participants, then maybe it moves... Um, maybe it moves 125 pips and then comes back 50. You see what I mean? Like, we just, uh, a little more volatility again. Which, if you're a short-term speculator, is, the, is an opportunity to make money. So, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but it might be good. Because five, $5 trillion a day, it's so liquid that there's always someone on the other side of your trade, and, and nothing happens, <laughs> right? So anyways, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Thank you for being a client of Trader's Way. Thank you for being here at Forex.today and posting your trading ideas and sharing and collaborating and commenting. I hope it makes you a great trader. I really do. I hope you become an amazing foreign exchange trader. I really do. I hope you feel that I mean that. Oh yeah, guess what I did this weekend? I cooked 3,000 chickens for charity. Had to wake up at 3... 3... Uh, yeah, 3 a.m. I had to wake up at 3 a.m. on a Saturday and cook 3,000 chickens. It was really good. Isn't that neat? So that's what uh, that's the lifestyle of a rock star currency trader. Wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, cook 3,000 chickens. I'm a socialist. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> Actually, we were raising money for our cause.
So I'd say in that case, if you sell 3,000 chickens so you can make profit and then invest that money in a way that you believe will benefit society, then it's not really socialism, it's capitalism. <laughs> the chickens that ate the bananas. No, it wasn't Charles, but that might have been a good thing too. But uh, yeah, it was really good. I think uh, probably like thirty thousand dollars was raised. It's pretty good. So, anyways, gotta gotta go. But uh, that was that. Nice. It was a good weekend. So yeah, we it's not socialism because we didn't cook the chickens and give them away. No, we we got companies to donate the money to buy it or to donate the food right and we had to not just cook chickens but then dip them in sauce and then also uh, beans and coleslaw and they all had to be packaged we also did a lot of ribs and it was a big to do 3,000 chickens so it was a big to do we had at least 200 people volunteered to do all the different things like manage the drive through and it was really well done very well organized and, it, and we were done by two in the afternoon and we're all gone um, and it was you know and if you're a police officer or a fireman or a paramedic you can just drive into the drive and we gave you the food um, but um, it was all very, very well done, but for profit. It wasn't given away. We sold them. And we exchanged our services of time, our, our, our labor. We mixed, if you want to talk about John Adams, or sorry, Adam, John Adams, Adam Smith, what we ended up doing is mixing our labor with these resources, and it became our property. It used to be someone else's, but then it became our, it was our chicken once we cooked it, right? And then we sold it in exchange our excess amount of chicken for someone's excess amount of cash so lots of people got chicken we got our cash and then we did whatever the hell we wanted to do with the cash which just happened to be a donation to charity yeah it was actually uh, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts so both my, my son and my daughter have been involved with the organization and uh, they have a very, very, very nice lodge. Mo most, uh, most Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, they meet in like the basement of churches or you know cafeterias at schools, which generally suck. Uh, and we have a beautiful private cabin in the woods with stone fireplaces and you know uh, all the history of all the the troops and packs years before, you know, giant, you know kitchen facility, storage facility. It's really, 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 really beautiful. But it costs a lot of money to maintain. So that money goes to maintaining the lodge so that we have a private lodge to, to give generations of children and develop them into young leaders. Cool, right? So it goes to children. Hey, got to run, babe. Didn't mean to make it a lecture. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. See you tomorrow. For the kids. For the kids. Namaste. Sharp, sharp.